I got another Lenovo product in the mail today. Uh, this one here is the Think Vision uh, portable monitor. It's the M14, I'm not sure where the name is on here, but it's an M14, 14 inch portable monitor running off USB-C. There's lots of reviews online for this. Um, a lot of them are actually pretty in depth, um, but they tend to go over the tech specs, um, which is great. However, I'm you know gonna, I think do just more of a user review here. Uh, so I'm gonna unbox it. I'm gonna test it out with my uh, ThinkBook. Um, and then I'm gonna actually potentially do a little gaming on it. I haven't seen any videos that do any gaming on it, at least from my brief look. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna you know look at it in terms of how it can benefit my productivity from what I'm doing. Um, I'll see if I can even hook it up to a, a desktop as well, but um, just some basic specs. Uh, it's a 1920 by 1080p monitor. Apparently it's around 300 nits. Um, some websites tested it and it came out to about 280. So it's not the brightest screen, but 300 nits is actually fine. You're probably not gonna be using this in an outdoor setting. You would you know, have your laptop potentially out there and then this is probably something like you go into a coffee shop or into an office or something and you set this up separately, where in that case, 300 nits, even in a bright room is, to be honest, it's more than enough, as long as the resolution and colors are good, which from what I read are decent. So let's open this up here. Um, I got it on the Lenovo, Lenovo Canada website. Um, I believe it was two, 269 Canadian, which is actually a really good price. Um, they sit typically closer to 330 or so on Lenovo and Best Buy and that and Amazon. So yeah, so I went with them. No import costs to Canada uh, because Lenovo doesn't do that. So this is your setup guide. It's straightforward. Looks like you can mount it. Uh, guess it's a mounting thing. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, wall mount poles. So you could just stick it on a wall if you wanted, which is kind of cool, I guess. It's not a very big screen, but that's still useful. That's the carrying case. It's kind of like a car floor floor mat material, um, but it's fine. It's pretty thick, so it should protect the screen. You don't want something flimsy. Um, if you're gonna throw this in your bag, it's gonna get banged up. These are part of the mounting brackets, I believe. So that's the USB-C cable that it comes with, I think. It is, uh, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was Three or six feet, I can't remember what it was, but let's see here. It's a nice thick cable actually. Um, so not as prone to get messed up. Oh, that is not six feet. Yeah, that's probably about three feet or approximately a meter, uh, which is good. Nice cable. So that's the screen there, nothing else in there. So here's the actual screen. There you got a fingerprint on it, of course. Um, it's quite light, very, very light. I would say hmm, two pounds, maybe under two pounds, maybe a pound and a half. I'm sure it says on the spec sheet, but uh, pretty light. Uh, it's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Uh, my ThinkBook here is a 16 by 10, which I prefer, but it's not a big deal. Uh, this is kind of your standard widescreen. Um, the hinge is quite firm in a good way. Uh, it actually feels kind of like a think book or think pad hinge there. Um, so it's not gonna fall over. Uh, it's not a one hand handing kind of thing, which is in my opinion, good. So, you know, that appears to hold up totally fine. Um, you know, you're gonna set this up and then kind of use it as it is. Um, it's quite thin, the actual screen is quite thin. Um, what would that be? Quarter inch probably or uh, three millimeters or so. It doesn't open up fully, it just goes to basically approximately 90 degrees. Uh, and then you get your buttons on the side there. This is your power in, and it can actually go through. So it's uh, display and power delivery. So you can plug in your, you know, your laptop USB-C charger into there or whatever it is, and then you can have the USB-C coming out there and providing, uh, hooking up to your computer for a display. 
Looks like you have brightness up and down here, and I don't know what that button is there. We'll figure it out. Okay, so obviously, and there's no built-in camera or anything, or no built-in speakers. It's just quite literally the screen. So let's get this hooked up with my ThinkBook and see how it looks. Uh, plug in the power there. I believe it doesn't matter what side. So you can have your laptop on your left or your right. Um, I typically have my main display being on this side, and then I have my second display on the right. So I'm going to set it up this way uh, on a regular basis. However, for the purpose of this video, because the way my camera is, I'm going to set it up here. And then you plug this in. This ThinkBook uh, is a great laptop. This is a ThinkBook 13 uh, S in terms of overall real estate. However, the height you can see here is almost the same. Uh, but you do lose some of the width there, which is fine for me. So this is going to line up quite nice there. Uh, the main thing with this laptop that I found kind of annoying is it does only has one singular USB-C port, which also doubles as power, um, which is kind of a pain. And I didn't think I was going to be able to, you know, get a lot of perf peripherals in here, but you can hook up, you know, a, a charging port or something. But basically you can just plug in the USB there, get power pulled through the screen itself. Uh, and then you can also put video out from it. Okay, so that's all plugged in. Uh, the cable is kind of a pain when it's on this side. What I might actually do is flip this around because this is like a hefty cable. So it's kind of annoying. So what I'm probably gonna do is actually flip that because um, I do like to line up my monitors pretty close to one another. So I'm actually gonna put the video cable on that side. I'm gonna put the power in this side here. Um, if you don't use the power here, you can run this monitor just off laptop power. So it'll pull power from the battery and it will also pull uh, the video cable, video display. So you can do either or, but because I only have one USB-C on this laptop, I'm gonna do everything directly there. So it's gonna actually charge my laptop rather than pull power from it. So I'm gonna set it up like that. Let's check power here. So you can see here it is, uh, my screen is charging my laptop so you can see here it's kind of small but I am getting power from my uh, USB-C charger cable that came with this laptop plugged into the monitor so the power is going into the monitor and then from the monitor it's going into my laptop so I'm actually getting power going through the external monitor which is great so for laptops like this that only have one USB-C that's going to be you know doubling up for power and display there's no problems so this is uh, this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This is a 16 by 10, my ThinkBook. Uh, the ThinkBook is a 13 inch, this is a 14 inch. However, you can see here because of the aspect ratio, um, the, uh, the height of the screens is almost identical, which is actually really nice. So if you have a 13 inch screen that's a 16 by 10, it works quite nice. Um, I just hit the power button. So the power button is over here. We'll turn that back on. Okay, so there's a couple settings here. There's this is the standard mode. Uh, there's a button over here on the left. When you hit it, it turns on what I believe is a blue light filter. Um, so it turns it, uh, it just turns the blue light settings down a bit, which is good if you're um, you know, late at night and you're reading or something on here and you don't wanna disrupt your sleep or it bothers your eyes, you can turn that off or on. So that's the blue light filter off. Um, I'm assuming that's blue light filter, it seems to be. Um, when it's on, you can't change the brightness. I guess it's kind of predetermined. When you turn off that filter, there's a button over here that you can turn up and down the brightness. So that was 100% right there. Uh, I mean, I'm not really seeing much of a difference here. Maybe a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit brighter, but it seems to be not doing a lot. But regardless, the screen looks quite nice. It's crisp, um, it's a 1080p screen. Um, you know, it's crisp enough. There's really no issues with the crispness of the icons. The screen is gonna exaggerate it a bit, but um, it looks fine to me. I don't have any issues with it. Um, it's probably similar screen tech to the other Lenovo laptops. Lenovo doesn't have the best screens in the world, to be honest, but they're fine, they're passable. Um, this is, so it's good. Um, you know, it's 
This here is a, you know, just a 60 hertz monitor. This here is 60, it's snappy enough. You're not gonna be, you know, getting a, the same as a 120 or 240 hertz monitor, but it's good. I'm not noticing any lag there that's bothering me. Um, really nice actually for a 1080p monitor. Um, it looks very similar to basically just a standard desktop 1080p monitor, um, you know, non-gaming monitor, just something that's pretty typical and crisp enough. Um, everything looks great, the text looks great. Uh, we'll compare that, we'll move that over there and uh, have a look. So that's on the laptop, which has actually a pretty good screen. That's on the external. So, you know, you're not losing any clarity. It looks quite nice, very legible, um, just like a standard nice 1080p monitor. Brightness is fine. I've seen people online saying that the 300 nit is something to do with power, um, you know, not getting enough power through the USB-C. I doubt that that's actually true. Um, it's just the panel itself. This is just a panel that operates at approximately 300 nits. You know, they could put a brighter panel in it, but it would cost more money and it would be a more um, more expensive monitor. I'm sure they could certainly do that. So in the future, maybe Lenovo will make a, um, make a 400 to 500 nits external screen. I, I don't see why USB-C would be a problem at all for that much power. I don't think, I don't think that's actually a factor here. I could be wrong, but I don't think that's a factor. So you could certainly, in my opinion, get a 400, 500 nit. It's probably just that the landscape doesn't have a lot of options and 300 just has become the standard, more or less. Um, again, if I'm wrong on that, correct me, but I think it's possible. Okay, so here we are in a game. Uh, this isn't the most powerful laptop, so I'm gonna test it on you know some more reasonable games. This is Tyranny here. Um, you know, It's not super demanding, but it has some nice colors and it looks pretty crisp, so I just wanted to test it on here. Um, so this is the actual laptop itself. Um, again, it's a little bit washed out on the camera, but um, in my eyes, it looks great. So I uh, don't really care about these. Okay, so it looks great. So what we'll do here is we'll switch over to the other monitor. Okay, so that's more, that's pretty much what I'm seeing here. This looks really nice. Uh, nice deep blacks. It's going to be a little bit exaggerated on camera, obviously, um, but in person, these are nice deep blacks here. Um, the colors are nice and vibrant, you know, bright greens, everything looks great. Um, this is the max setting. If you're playing gaming, you know, you're probably not playing outside on a patio, so you should be more or less fine. Um, just, I just killed this guy. But uh, yeah, it looks great, you know. Pretty typical 1080p monitor, standard refresh rate. You know, you're looking at what well, you'd get on a like 60 hertz monitor, nothing crazy. I suppose if you're playing any title that's, you know, just a day-to-day -day title, that's not a, like a fast twitch FPS, you're gonna be totally fine with this monitor, but it actually looks quite good in terms of color. The brightness is fine. You know, if I open up a bunch of windows in here, uh, let's turn on some lights. Right, so now the room is extremely well lit. Um, you know, there's that overhead glare, which I actually can't see in person. I think it's just the angle. There you go. So, you know, this is a really well lit room. The sun is coming right in the window. It's, all the walls are white um, and still it's quite visible. So I've seen people complain, you know, all oh, 300 nits is not enough. Well, if you're inside a building, which is probably how you're going to be using this monitor, it's totally fine. You see here, um, it looks really nice. To be honest, both of the screens look more or less the same. Um, again, I'm not outside, so the brightness values are going to make a big difference, but this looks quite crisp um, and I really like it. So let's. Uh, so we'll make that one big there, we'll make this one big here. Okay, and I did want to add one more thing here. Uh, I'm outdoors right now. It's an incredibly bright day. The sun is coming from the uh, from the right there. Um, I just wanted to see, you know, how well we can see the screen here. Um, this is my laptop. Again, 400 nits. The sun is more or less right on it. It's pretty bright, but you can see it. I, don't, I wouldn't have any problems working with that. This is the external monitor. 
300 nits, so definitely a little bit more difficult to see, but uh, it's kind of noisy out here, but you know, you can still see that screen. It's fine, to be honest. So that's 400 nits outdoors, full sun. It's a really bright day outside. Um, so we can see here, you know, that's 400 nit screen, more or less legible in the sun. You know, the sun is shining right on this device here. You can see it. And we'll flip this around here. Again, the sun is shining right on it. You can see my hand is super light. This is a 300 nit screen and it's fine. Here okay, so here's another cool thing. Right now I just have, uh, the only connection is the USB-C going between the monitor and the computer. So right now it's pulling power from my battery. This doesn't have an external charging port, it only has the USB-C. So, you know, right now it's running video to the screen and it's running power to the screen from the battery. If I come here and I take my, uh, my charger, I plug it in here to the monitor. And if we go over here, we'll notice right away, instantly, it's getting power. So it went from drawing power from the battery of this computer and uh, display as well to actually charging it. So, you know, I just pop that in and all of a sudden I'm charging my laptop as a pass-through. So the power is coming up here, going into the screen and then coming back into my laptop. So it's getting power, you know, through here, but then it's actually sending the single sig signal back. If I pop that out, now all of a sudden I'm going to drop the power. So it's going to kick out for a second or two there, boom, right away. It instantly switches to delivering power from the battery. So, you know, battery giving power, video giving power. And then if I plug in the external power source, it just instantly is going to flip. There's not even going to be any flicker here. It's just going to go right away. Boom. All of a sudden I'm charging. Here's one more thing that I wanted to test, and that is see if I can uh, hook up a tablet to the screen. Um, so this is a Chrome tablet, um, Chromebook tablet. It's basically like an Android tablet. Um, it's the Lenovo Duet, um, but it operates like a Chromebook, but it also runs Android apps, whatever. So let's plug this in here. Uh, this only has, this tablet only has one USB port, just the USB-C here. Um, so I'm gonna plug this in, see if it works. Um, at that point, you know, it's gonna be running power off of the tablet, so it would drain it a little bit faster. But another thing you could probably do is get a powered USB hub, but uh, let's see, so that, oh, there you go. Um, <clears throat> so let's see here. Yep, so there, there you go. So it looks like uh, it's mirroring it perfectly fine. Um, I'm not actually aware how to um, set up two monitors, but basically you can see there I am running now you know, a, a tablet, this is an 11 inch tablet, and now I have a second monitor. So, you know, I could either use this as an input device and use that as the primary display or, you know, whatever. This one actually does come with a keyboard, so let's hook that up. Uh, and let's see if I can figure out how to uh, not mirror the display. Okay, so I uh, just went into settings here. There you go, it recognizes it right there. So it says, you know, you can see the two different monitors here. Um, this is the primary, this is the second. Uh, mirror, so it's not actually mirroring, which is cool. I guess as soon as I kind of went in here, it went away. So, um, you know, you can come in here, you can mirror it if you want. Uh, so you can see here now it's mirrored. Um, this could be quite a bit brighter here. This uh, Chromebook actually gets, or Chromebook tablet thing, it's quite bright. So this gets up to 500 nits, but uh, let's put it kind of in the middle. Yeah, so you can see here, um, I just went into settings. Um, you can make it mirror display if you so choose, uh, which would just quite literally mirror it, which is fine, I guess, if you want to do that. Um, or you can just have it extended over here, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, this is not a touchscreen. This, you know, this comes in a touchscreen variant, so you can get the M14T, uh, which is a touchscreen variant. If you're going to be using it with a, you know, a tablet primarily, it might be useful actually to have a touchscreen version. Um, for me, it's not a big issue because this tablet has a keyboard, so I can come over here and I can use it almost like a mouse. 
uh, almost like an, a laptop with the mouse trackpad here, a Bluetooth, um, you'd have to have a Bluetooth mouse or something like that so that you can use the screen over here. Otherwise, you'd basically, you'd basically need to have the touch version of this, which is quite a bit more expensive. So, you know, if you're going to be using it primarily with a tablet um, that doesn't have a keyboard and trackpad or a, a Bluetooth mouse, uh, you probably want to get the touch version of this, the M14T. Uh, it, it is quite a bit more expensive because then you could, you know, touch over here and you can touch over here and that would be fine. In my case, um, you know, it doesn't matter because I have this little trackpad here or I could hook up a Bluetooth mouth, but, mouse. But um, So we can come over here. We can see some of the parameters here. Extended. Um, I could make this over here, the primary display. Um, resolution. <clears throat> It's actually not the resolution of the screen, 1440 by 900. Uh, but it looks like maybe that's the max that this device can output to an external. So 1440 by 900, um, which it, I guess it looks fine. I can't really tell the difference between 1080. It's pretty close. Uh, 60 hertz is what it's outputting by default. Oop, that actually does work. So you can turn on nightlight. That's a little bit more blue to my eyes. Um, that's going to be more red, so that's cool. You can do that. You can actually change cooler or warmer here. Um, so this is Chrome OS here, which is fine. I hope if I actually touched. So you can see here, because I did it on this screen, um, you know, that's actually extending rather than mirroring. So, you know, now I have this over here working like a normal desktop. And then I could come back over here and I could play my game. Yeah, so there you can see right there, I have a, you know, this is a Chromebook tablet um, with, I just happen to have a keyboard hooked up to it. Um, I am extending the display, so I have my uh, game over here. I have my documents over here that I'm trying to look up how to beat this game or whatever, whatever I'm trying to do. I can have my game over here, or I could have media on the screen here. I could be watching YouTube. You know, I can flip this over here. Uh, if I were to close down this game, I could throw some YouTube videos over here, so let's do that. So kill that game right there. Uh, you know, I could move this over here. Turn on some YouTube. And then over on this screen, I could do my productivity stuff. I hope if I was looking at the screen rather than through the camera, you know, I could be over here working on a document or, you know, whatever I'm trying to do over here, doodle. Uh, and I could be watching videos over here, right? So there you go. Um, this is basically a uh, perfectly functional external monitor, not just for a laptop, but you can use it for portable devices such as a tablet. Um, you could use it for with your iPhone. I'm going to test that on my iPhone. I know I'm, I know it's going to work because I've seen it on videos, but I'm recording on my iPhone. But if it doesn't work, I'll update that in the in the description. But so far, everything's great. So there you go. It even works on a uh, Chromebook, uh, which is a tablet Chromebook in this case, uh, which is wonderful. So it work for Android, iPhone. I you know you can fold this back uh, under like that. That was a nice little snap there, actually quite satisfying. So, you know, you're getting a quite, it's over here, you know, you're looking at a few centimeters, a few millimeters, or like a quarter of an inch or something. Even over here, it's quite thin. That's about a centimeter or two thirds of an inch, I guess. Um, carrying case lined on the inside, so that fits nicely inside. Um, it's not, you know, it doesn't have any support from bending so you know if you have any you know, forces like that where you're going to be twisting on it you're going to want to have um, you know a case that's not going to do that but in terms of scratching this is thick enough um, if something's hitting against it gently no problems um, feels pretty good um, this is a pretty rough material but the inside is kind of this you know velvety or what is that flannelly velvety stuff um, so it shouldn't cause any scratches but yeah really really nice actually you can pop that on top of your portable laptop. This is a 13-inch laptop. Pop that on there. 
and uh, go about your business, right? It's the size of the 13S ThinkBook, tiny bit bigger, nothing special there, about the same thickness. So even the combo of this, um, you know, taking this with you is, you know, it's not a very big ask. You're probably looking at of under five pounds combined. Okay, so there we go. That's basically my uh, quick user review. Um, am I impressed with this? Uh, actually, very much so for the price. I mean, you're looking at uh, Canadian, probably around $300, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, depending on the sale. The screen looks wonderful. Um, you know, I you tested it indoors. I tested it compared to this screen over here, which is a brighter screen. Uh, these are both, you know, this is a 1080p, this is a 1200. So they're basically the same. You're looking at 1080p monitors. Really, really nice actually for the resolution you get. Not super large bezels, anything ridiculous. It's more or less the same as that. Bit of a chin, like most ThinkPads, but nothing crazy. Um, games look nice, bright, vibrant. Um, again, it's, a, you know, it's not the fastest refresh rate, but you're not going to be probably playing competitive FPS gaming on this where, you know, it actually matters. Um, I took it outside. It looked really, really nice outside. No problems there either. Um, you know, it looked quite nice, even in the direct sunlight. So, um, yeah, I'm impressed. I think it's a great buy. Um, if you're looking for something that, you know, dramatically increases your productivity, if you just have a small portable laptop like this, I'd give this a go, to be honest, unless you're going to haul around a 27-inch full-on monitor. <laughs>